Welcome to this installment of the Frank and Mary on Nantucket show. Um, it is a show that is sponsored by Art Bergeron and Merrick O'Connell. Um, he's a lawyer from Marlborough who comes here um, to Nantucket and teaches us a lot about what seniors have as far as options. Um, he's gently sitting here, but again, it was another bad day on the ferry. And so I'm here with our guest, Jason Bridges, a select board member, Jason Bridges, to do this show. Um, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me, yeah. Allison. No, we love having our, our elected officials join us on the show to give us the real scoop. Um, and I know <laughs> that town meeting is coming up, mm -hmm. and we'd love to have you share some of the things that may be, that are important to seniors and their families here. Um, but first mm -hmm. of all, yep. channeling Arthur, he always likes to know how you got here. Are you a native of Washashore? Or tell us a little bit about yourself. I am 100% a wash ashore. <laughs> so I've been here for 21 years. I came in 1999 for just one summer. So it's the usual me too. classic story of Nantucket. 79 for me though. 79? Yeah. Wow. My daughter's a native though, so that gives me a little clout, but not, yeah, I'm not a native. So my, my, my two-year-old was born here on mm -hmm. the island. Um, I, I, I was in the service industry. I worked at Food for Hair and There. I don't know if anybody remembers that pizza place. I was here for 40 years. I did that for 10 years, and then I started a bike tour company, and then a coffee shop, and then started getting involved in nonprofits and volunteering for a clean team, and just kind of got that taste of service to your community. And so just kept kind of kept adding on, and then you know, ran for the select board three years and ago. And so you ran for the select board three years ago, yeah. and your term expires? April 14th this year. April 14th, so you'll be on the ballot yeah. this year. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> well. Um, if people watch the select board meetings and mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's becoming much bigger deal, I think, than it has been in the last, you know, the 20 years prior anyway. So um, we're glad to have you. It's a very time consuming job. And yes. we thank people who have the kind of commitment that you and the rest of the board have when it comes to your free time mm -hmm. and what you choose to give to the to the community. So, um, so a couple of things to start off. This will be the very first electronic voting. Yes. So, can you do you know what that's going to look like? Just not a big deal, but do we each get an iPad when we go in? Or it's a, it's even simpler than that. You get a just call it a clicker. You're going to get a little clicker when you sign in. They're going to give you the clicker. They're going to hand it to you, and it has a yes or a no on it. That's it. No abstain. Nothing else. So when when the vote comes up, you push yes or no. I don't know exactly which ones were which version we're using, but there'll be some kind of confirmation that your vote was complete. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, because you're not sure if you clicked it or not, you could click it a hundred times and you only get one, one. vote. Just oh, in case you were that's in convenient. case you were thinking of trying to sneak <laughs> some extra votes in. Um, and so it's going to be really really simple. Like we didn't even want to abstain on there because we didn't for the first time we didn't want anyone, anybody to be confused mm -hmm. about it. So. It's be really simple. We only have it for Saturday. So if town meeting goes to Monday or Tuesday night, then we'll go back to the old school way of just kind of raising our hands. Well, that's going to be interesting. Hopefully we can wrap it all up. And can you please confirm date and time for town meeting for just so we yep. all know? Nine o'clock, April 4th, and that's Saturday morning. So we 9 a.m. Saturday morning, April 4th. Yeah, we'll be done by four o'clock, hopefully, who knows. And there'll be a break for lunch? Yep, there's usually okay. a break, and there's uh, there'll be food available in the cafeteria. And Great. So there's uh, there's nutrition there and water and, and and all that. I think the electronic voting will speed things up. Like all think about all the time, the extra three or yeah. four minutes, the clickers, you know, people counting. We're not really sure. You count again, so it'll be quicker. Uh, so that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think because it's new, I think we're just gonna have to see how it goes. One advantage is. A lot of times we don't like to vote next to our clients or someone who's our boss or you know our neighbor, and so you either don't vote or you're you know you're hesitant sometimes. Yeah. Some people can be. This takes all that out of there, so it's going to be more of a true vote, I think. That'll be interesting. I look forward to trying it out. Yeah. Um, and so there are there are tons of articles um, that have been called and will be spoken about at town meeting. Um, what articles do you think are most important to seniors? Or, well, let's just let the cat out of the bag and say, what's going on with the salt marsh? 
Senior Center mm -hmm. and Our Island Home, two of the facilities that need upgrading to mm -hmm. accommodate our vastly and speedily growing elder population. So we have 117 articles on this year's warrant. We have 49 or 50 citizen warrant articles. So that's going to be a lot of conversations there. Um, so I think with the um, senior center, that we're waiting on a la one more report or some more so just we, studies. There is confusion, not necessarily okay. among the people who are our viewers, but the senior center is the salt marsh. Yes. And it is a town, it's now on town owned land. And the NCEA, the Nantucket Center for Elder Affairs, mm -hmm. owns the building. Right. So going forward. Going forward, we're hoping for a special town meeting uh, article of where the new senior center is going to go. It's not going to be on that current site. And there's two, as you're very involved mm -hmm. in it, there's two or three different locations that have been, been looked at. And so the goal is to, let's see, so this is February, March. By this, I think you have to have the warrants articles in by June or July to know where we're going to head and what direction, and then we can ask for appropriation this at the fall town meeting, and, and then it's then it's a real thing. And so this town meeting, what will the discussion be, or will there? There won't be anything for the senior center for Salt Marsh. Great. Cause, so because we we it just we couldn't get the studies done in time before the warrant was was um, need to be finished and completed, but on our island home. There was a lot there that we've can, and as you know, we've been kind of backtracking on a little bit. It was originally it was going to be a $5 million ask and appropriation for design of the new R Island home building. Mm -hmm. and, and, if, and then in a fall town meeting, there would have been a $50 million ask for the new building. And so for many different reasons, one was we only had one option and we thought that we should have a look at one or two or three different options. Mm -hmm. for that location where currently our own home sits. Three different options for that one location? Right. Instead, uh -huh. of, you know, maybe the, I don't want to speak out of mm -hmm. the terms. I'm not on the kind of the, the mini work group or I'm not up to date completely on where it's at. So I, I want to say we, we did pull back a little bit. We're not going to ask for the five million at this year's town meeting for a design on something that we don't feel is 100 percent vetted. And if we went through with this design and then went and asked for $50 million and that didn't pass, that would not be a good thing. So I think we need to do a little more homework on, uh, is it 45 beds with the kind of the current setup on the current site? Uh, it, it's, it's so, right. I, I don't even know where to start on right. this. It's so complicated. Right. I don't know how much you want to talk about this, but we, we did pull back a little bit, not in the sense of that we're not going to get things done. It's to have a little more choices and look at some different um, options for that site. Home health care, different offices. Mm -hmm. Do we need 35 beds? Are, are 10 beds just for this? And this is a little over my pay grade mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, on all the ins and outs of it because it's so complicated with a, a Medicare, a Medicaid bed, right. and all these, these well, things. So, let's, so when it comes to this town meeting, mm -hmm. what, what is going to be decided with regard to our island home? Not much just the the budget override that's, that's the main thing that's, that's the big, a big one that's a right. huge thing but nothing with a new building oh, right okay i think there might be a little bit of money 100,000 100 200,000 to to continue the studies mm -hmm. but i don't think that's in that might be just in the overall um, budget in the general fund so what do you when do you expect that that the discussion about the 5 million dollar override will be on the schedule of the day it, any idea when when that it'll, is it'll be in the beginning in the i think beginning. it'll be called because it's in and i'm not sure which article it's in if mm -hmm. it's in eight nine or ten but it's not um it's within the bigger article of our overall budget and so it would be five million dollars would most likely start in fiscal year 22 which would not be this July 1st. Let's assume it passes, right? Mm -hmm. It would most likely start not this July 1st in 2020, the next year. So if it passed, taxes wouldn't change until July of next year. And so the $5 million figure came about how? I'm gonna try to yeah. make this as simple yeah, no, as this possible. Is, this is, we aren't holding you to any of this. 
So there's something called the CPE funds that we get from that um, have been helping us with the shortfall of our own home, right? It's, it's four to $5 million a year that it loses. But we've been getting this, um, consider it like a free cash from, for an enterprise fund. And for a while, the CPE funds have been, been really good. And so it's been, it's been keeping that um, $5 million loss down, right? But now the CPE funds are kind of going away. So what's going to happen is that $5 million is actually going to be, let's say now it's, it's $2 million that's coming out of our general fund. So this is our whole general fund. $2 million goes to taking care of our own home, the shortfall. And the $3 million is covered other ways. And so that's operating budget. It's operating. Yeah. But when this other funding goes away, mm -hmm. now it's $5 million. So that extra $3 million is going to come out of all the other departments, all the other services. We're going to have to cut to cover it because this other funding source is going away. That's the basic way mm -hmm. I can explain it. So doing a budget override, one, it, it will increase taxes, and we can get to that because we were talking about it before mm -hmm. we started here tonight on what that would actually, um, what the impact would be. But it would, it, so it would allow the general fund to stay whole and also give a little more room for, for more services. So some people have said, like, well, it's going to be a big money grab for this extra room in the general fund, right? That one or two million that we that it's going to open up, right? And we'll have to decide on where those funds are going to go. And so what if the funding does not drop off? Then we will have to start cutting services. No, no, I mean, oh. uh, is it, so say like the the three million that's been coming oh, in from, from the, the state. Yeah, yeah, from the state. What yeah. if that continues? Because is, is that a guarantee that that money's going to stop? Pretty much. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what our finance director, and that's what he has been worried about mm -hmm. as he, he knows this is going to get lower and lower and lower. And is that because we're the only municipal nursing skilled nursing facility in the state or? Some of that is there, but it's uh, when I ask our financial, our finance director, it's so complicated after about five minutes, I'll say, Brian, can you just yeah. pull it down? It's really yeah. complicated of, of how we get these funds. But we know they're going to go. We, we always knew they were to go away at some point. But we didn't know when. So we were kind of running on borrowed time for a while mm -hmm. on this, you know, five million dollar loss. For Island Home, right? I mean, just, I, yeah, I always, I always think, I wonder if there's a way that we can be recognized by the state as, and guarantee ourselves to get funding from, um, from a state source since mm -hmm. we have no other option. So that's something that I'm going to pursue and have started and will right. with our with our representatives, um, Julie and Sierra and mm -hmm. Dylan Fernandez. So they are, they are listening and, and on it, but it would be, you know. It's almost like a ferry service to have a skilled nursing facility. It's a public utility. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Right. And this, that, in, this town meeting votes as values, and we've, we've always voted for um, t this $5 million um, loss for Island Home. We've been okay with it, right? And we've been okay with trying to put money to the current Island Home. We almost, as we all know, almost got a new home back in my comet, um, our Island Home, it, it, but it just... It was not Too many quite unanswered there. questions, yeah. And people wanted to keep it on the current site. So that's what we're doing now. Price tag is going to be, you know, 50 million and over. But the, our, we vote our values and it's important to us. So we're, we're most likely going to go forward. We want to make sure it's the best explained, thought through version the next time we bring a major appropriation, like a new Island home. And so I think that's why we're you know, pulling back a little bit and doing our homework a little more. But then the override is something that we kind of knew was coming for a long time. Um, it, it's tough. So what? Well, so, you know, first of all, if at town meeting we, we all push a yes for our island home yes. and, it, and it passes, mm -hmm. then there becomes the challenge at the ballot box right. on April. No, when is the vote after 14th, that? April yeah. 14th. Yeah. So 10 days later. Mm hmm and so 10 days later, there'll be a question, a referendum question, and it will, it is that mark on the ballot that is the most important when it comes to either supporting or not supporting um, the island home. Because if people vote no at the ballot, then what happens? Then we, uh, things move forward as usual, right? And as those CP funds go down, we will have to cut more services in our current, through our current budget 
to keep up with that loss, right? Does that, does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. I'm I'm so not very spreadsheet <laughs> and budget oriented. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really confusing to me, but. So the concern that the island home will close at the end of this fiscal year is unfounded. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've, and, you, that's you've heard well, that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. You know, people are concerned if it doesn't pass at the oh. at the ballot box, what happens? And that's worst case scenario in people's yeah. minds. But I don't think this is a referendum of whether we're going to go forward with island home. I've heard that. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to continue, then pass this budget or, or mm -hmm. pass this override. I just think it's because um, we could always come back and try it again next year. If it doesn't pass and we have to start cutting services because that $5 million of the loss of Island Home, mm -hmm. we've only, the taxpayers have only been paying about $2 million of it. Well, when that goes to $5 million, right, from mm -hmm. two to five, that $3 million is we're gonna have to cut from everywhere, from public safety, from human services, from DPW to cover it. Mm -hmm. And so I think when people see services going down, they might maybe think differently because $3 mm -hmm. million is a, is a lot. Even even when you spread it out to three, a lot of different three million, the median house price of <laughs> we won't no, get but into in, that in yet. services, right? right? I mean, right. You, you have to cut positions and yeah. yeah. So when it comes down to what is it going to cost the average year-round taxpayer, and you know one thing that I always think about is that we're supported so so much by people who don't live here and mm -hmm. don't utilize our services that that sort of is a little bit of a bonus for the people who live here because so many other people are sharing in right. the costs of running our our everything. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the cost of to each individual household, explain what the costs for those households would be. Mm -hmm. So one thing I usually say is nine out of the ten teachers are paid for by people who will never use them who are only here in the summer. Mm -hmm. Right, eighty nine percent of our property taxes are paid for by summer residents, non-year-round residents. 89%, so, yeah. wow. So always, to make it easy, it's like nine out of 10 teachers are paid yeah. for by, nine out of 10 potholes are fixed by the a funding source that is only here mostly in the summer. Right, I so, mean, I think that's um, um, amazing. We're, that, we're very fortunate in that sense. Yeah. That being said, it's still very expensive to live here and the taxes still aren't easy to handle, mm -hmm. especially if you're on a fixed income. Right, so, so monthly, what did we calculate the override for our island home would cost? On an average house of 1.3 million, if you take the residential exemption, um, which m probably most of us do, so let's assume you take if, the residential exemption. If you exemption, don't do it, you better, you yeah, ought to. You should, yeah. Uh, it'll be around $14 a month additional cost to your taxes for the budget override of five million. Mm -hmm. Now there's other items on town meeting that, that could potentially add to that if those pass, mm -hmm. other appropriations. There's also certain things that are coming off our books as well, which we never really like to talk about. Why, do, why not? I don't know. I think if um, I think town officials think if, if they tell everybody that these things are coming off our books, it's a an action item to spend more money. Oh. Right? So they don't like to talk about what's coming off uh -huh. the books. You don't ever really hear about it in town meeting or, right. or anywhere. But it's um, we have you know Newtown Road. We've got Lover's Lane. We've got um, the Children's Beach stormwater and that pump station. Um, and we have the, the Weight Drive, Amelia Drive area. Mm -hmm. Those all total about $20 million in overrides, right? In, in kind of debt overrides that they, we'll be able to vote for it at the right. ballot box, in addition to the $5 million. Mm -hmm. Well, I just like to think about the high note part of how 90% of the costs to our town are paid by people who don't use them. I mean, that... Well, they use them, but just for three or four months. Right. But they don't use the public school system. They right. don't use our island home or maybe the Saltmarsh Center a little bit, but what a bonus it is for people who live here and pay taxes year-round to have that kind of support. Um, yeah, so if you take that and you, you look at the average of $15 million a year that's donated to all the nonprofits and all the different you know, areas of the island from kind of the wealthier visitors of this island, it's still difficult to live here, mm -hmm. right? It's still yeah. challenging for our seniors, for people who are young, I mean, for, every, for everyone, families, childcare. Mm -hmm. like we have a lot of challenges. Yes, we do. So what are some of the other things at town meeting that you think would be, or other things in town government that you think would be important to seniors? 
I'm a big transportation guy. Mm -hmm. I love thinking about transportation. I have a bike tour company, so I'm on the roads a lot. I walked here from downtown mm -hmm. to do this interviews. And I, I think we, we overall, the policymakers at the select board, different committee members and different town departments need to think more about aging on Nantucket in general. So our strategic plan that we, we did a couple of years ago has housing and transportation and the environment. And there are some aspects that look at um, aging on Nantucket with housing, but it's it's not the main conversation. Our island home and the senior center, which are very important, take most of the time when you talk about any initiatives for seniors. I think we need to, we need to add in transportation, you know, getting to appointments. Um, there's an article in the paper today where I'm quoted as saying uh, the NERDA year-round service should be free to seniors in the off season. Not on Wednesdays, not mm -hmm. once a month, always, right? I think there can be vouchers for the, for the taxis that we can find some kind of system where if a senior needs to get somewhere that's not on the nerder route and it doesn't fit with the time that they can just take a taxi and use a voucher, right? There's gotta be little ways that mm -hmm. we don't have to make the taxi drivers pay for it that we can, we can help people get around. So I'm, 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 I think access is really important, whether it's access to the Salt Marsh Center to connect with other people, access to getting to your appointment on time, on island and off island. Or church or- Or church, yeah. Zip, yeah, Any, anywhere you wanna go. The but, movies yeah. or- right? and, and so is there an active work group right now in the town government working on, on that type of not Expansion. on those, not on those specific things. Mm -hmm. I am like I'm voicing it on mm -hmm. our select board meetings. I've been coming to uh, different meetings for the human health, mm -hmm. you know, health and human services to try to educate myself on where I can help. I I don't think this is a, a ten million dollar problem. I just think it's focus of all of our time to think to come up with different solutions. And so I thank you for coming to the Age and Dementia Friendly Initiative Workshop, mm -hmm. of which I'm. I'm very um, interested in. We've had um, a facilitator come to do to lead three workshops mm -hmm. um, on how Nantucket can become age and dementia friendly. Um, but to you know, and I'm and I thank the, you and Taylor and you know Janet and all the people from the town who are attending that. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering how we can move it to the next level and have that be a forum to talk about some of the things that are. Um, challenges in our town for people, the 31% of the people who live on Nantucket right. that are over 55. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, let's, let's keep that conversation going. But, but right now when it comes to town meeting, um, I'm just wondering what you think are things that seniors should be um, paying attention to over and above the salt marsh and the, and the Ireland home issues. I mean, of course, everything. I feel like it's everything. Yeah. Um, and I, I wrote some, you know, I went over the uh, the warrant this morning to kind of look at what are the things. Obviously, anything that's going to hit your taxes are going to be important, right? Because if you're living on a fixed income, that's if your taxes go up $50 a month or $30 a month, you have to find where that's going to come from. And so I think I mentioned earlier, you know, Newtown Road, Lover's Lane, um, Way Drive, which is behind the police station, that mm -hmm. new development back there. Those are all going to be appropriations that we're going to see in the ballot, and they're all really, really important. Because yeah, I mean, they're important. So the it's Wait, uh, Waydale Road is just repaving it, or what? Is is building out the road, mm -hmm. kind of the infrastructure, and you know, clearing it out, and uh, you know, there's sewer and water and all those different things that have to be kind of put into that and, and pave it. And as you know, everything on Nantucket is a little more expensive than it is off island. Uh, but Newtown Road is an example. It, that is now a new cut through for everyone who wants to avoid the, the roundabouts in the Milestone Rotary. And so the people living there have been, uh, we, we put speed tables in, like the big bumps we have to go over. Mm -hmm. But that whole road needs to be reconstructed and we need a proper sidewalk. And we have a daycare facility there and people just are shooting through really fast. So there needs to be uh, you know, a, a separated bike path or multi-use, you know, sidewalk that's wide enough for people to walk, which is one of the initiatives of the select board is to have more walking paths yeah, in Mid Island that connect to downtown, right? So people can walk safely. We, 
We can't ask people, we as a community, to not drive, to drive your car less if we don't have safe places to walk, safe places to ride your bike, year-round transportation, satellite, access, parking. satellite parking, accessible parking, um, accessible transportation for, for seniors, for commuters, people who work downtown. We gotta think about, about everything. Right? And nobody, it's easier for me to say, Allison, I'd like you to drive less, <laughs> but I still wanna drive my car around, right? right? right. Um, so I'm just, I did ask the, the, the friends board to, if they had any questions about town meeting and, and senior services. And there's one that uh, I've heard this from a couple of, of people. Um, can outside money be raised for the Saltmarsh Senior Center and our island home to keep the costs of building these two important facilities down? I mean, you know, nowhere have, have, have there been um, suggestions or conversations about private gifts to help build these. Is that something that could be incorporated into the planning stages? And if so, when? And it has could the town be. thought about that at all? Well, that's the thing. The town can't think about, the town can't go out and solicit public money, right? A, um, a public- pr Private money. Pri sorry, sorry, okay. private right. money. Sorry, private money for, mm -hmm. It just it's just not what no what you do you can't count on that right now if a, a private individuals or if a local group right grassroots organization comes up and raises money for a bike path for a senior center we'll we'll take the money right mm -hmm. that lowers everybody's tax um, taxes up for the project if it gets passed it speeds it along right mm -hmm. Hummock Pond bike path is a great example right somebody who abuts that bike path said. I will come in and donate a large amount of money if you start it now, if you can speed it up. So that gets pushed up to the queue, mm -hmm. right? So that could definitely happen with the Saltmarsh Center. So the answer to that is yes. Absolutely. Yeah. But the town can't really go out and ask for and run that. It's just, there'd be some problems well, you there. You certainly can't budget around right. what someone's gonna donate, but it's, but that question has come up, you know, not because I think that there are a lot of people out there especially after the this very successful hospital fundraising that right. um, have an extra 20 million to throw down, but you never mm -hmm. can tell. When, it gets when tricky always... when, when someone says, hey, here's $10 million for a salt wash center, but I'd like green windows and I want it over here. And so, you know, it gets, sometimes it can be complicated yeah. accepting that money, but, it, but if it's through an organization, whether it's a community foundation or a, a, a grassroots organization, it definitely can be done. Jason, thank you for attending the Age and Dementia Friendly Workshop mm -hmm. Initiative workshops. Um, I'm curious what you think of them and how you think Nantucket can move forward with this actually state, nationwide um, movement. I really enjoyed my time at the, that last meeting. It really um, kind of gave me a focus on in a pathway of how we can talk about this more at a policy level for select board. Um, just having Taylor Hills now as the human health and human services director, I, I think we have so much potential. It, it just really opened my eyes to um, that we don't really focus on aging on Nantucket. And we do it through our own home, we do it through a senior center, but there's so many other things that we can we can talk about. And I, I was really moved by, uh, like afterwards I went and watched the documentary, I Remember Better When I Paint, mm -hmm. and it just blew me away. And so there's so many things that we can do with nonprofits, um, working with um, residents of our own home or just people who are in their home. How do we help people age in their home? And it's all in the uh, feasibility study of aging on Nantucket, the community right, assessment. And, which everyone should read. It is so good. Right. Even just the executive summary, read those first eight or we 10 will pages. Put that, we'll put that on, on that link on, on the screen so yeah. people can review it, but it was the, um, study done at the end of 2017? 2018. 2018. Yeah. Yeah. Um, about, um, what's the title of it again? Uh, I actually have it right here. Oh, how convenient. Aging on Nantucket, a community needs assessment. And it was done as, um, I think Remain was a funder and the NCEA put that together mm -hmm. and it was done by UMass Boston, which is the very first step when you are trying to become an age and dementia friendly community, mm -hmm. the first step which we've already taken is to have an assessment done. So we are well poised to actually get something done mm -hmm. with 
that um, grassroots initiative. But yeah, I was really moved by that that meeting. There was because there was people there that had you know parents that are dealing with uh, Alzheimer's and dementia, and just hearing their stories of just little things of how they move around and what can they go to yoga and the services that they would really need to help them and their families that and they're at home right and are in their home and i thought there's more that we can do there's more that the select board can talk about from a policy issue right and there's, there's little things that we like we did this year uh there's we have a substance abuse stabilization fund that we can take some of the money from the short-term rental tax and put mm-hmm. in it we added in mental health so it can be used for substance abuse and mental health so to me that that's Alzheimer's work, dementia, it's, you know, bringing the arts into, um, you know, aging on, on Nantucket community. and Yeah, and also, you know, caregiver support needs to mm-hmm. be um, in for all of those, um, you know, populations. Um, needs to also be included as a focus. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we look forward to seeing you at the, the postponed. There was a session planned for today that has been postponed until next Thursday, which is March 5th. 5th. So it'll be Thursday, March 5th at the Nantucket Athenaeum. Um, We are downstairs between 2 and 4 p.m. in the gallery this time, and everyone is welcome. Um, Whether you know someone with with dementia or have an interest in transportation or art or therapies, um, we need all the people we can with their great ideas. So please do join us. Thanks.